What is up, villains? Dragon Ball Black here, and today I wanted to go ahead and make a rebuttal video to the YouTuber Reality Punch Studios and their video Dragon Ball Super The Problem with Zamazu. Now, in this video, in their most humblest opinion, they have declared Zamazu the worst villain in all of Dragon Ball. Well, you guys might be thinking, oh snap, this has Dragon Ball Black triggered. Well, sort of, but I understand some of his points, but I do want to rebuttal some of the things that he has stated because of the fact that uh, they are wrong, in my humblest opinion. So let me go ahead and give you guys the things that he, he was saying and the rebuttals to them. So he states that Zamazu, his character, his motivation is that he feels sorry for the humans, that he feels disgust for the humans, and which in this retrospect you guys can take as uh, being sentient be beings, mortals. He feels sorry for them because, and he, they disgust them because of the fact that uh, all their atrocities, such as you know being human, being mortal. And he states that Zamazu never once says that he feels sorry for them. That's the reason he's going to kill them. Well, let me go ahead and go to the very first one of the, the very first episode in the Goku Black arc, where Goku Black says that the he thinks that he kills Mai, and he says the only real thing that a mortal has to look forward to is death. Something along those lines kind of twisting the same thing that Reality Punch Studio says didn't happen into into fabrication into existence. He says that he feels he feels sorry that he basically he feels sorry for these guys, the mortals, and he's going to put them out of their misery exactly what he says that he didn't say. So that's one strike for this channel. Now, it is true that later on in the show or in the arc Zamazu or Goku Black never states which are they are the same character. They never state that, you know, later on that, oh, well, I feel sorry for them, I feel this and I feel that, and, you know, I want to put them out of their misery. He doesn't say it ever again. He only says it as he is Goku Black and in the very first episode. And let me tell you why that is. Goku Black's Zamazu's way of thinking is, it's not a way of thinking of, that he's trying to do something for the for the greater good. In the video, it states that Goku Black thinks he's doing the right thing. He thinks he's the hero in the story. Well, that's not true. He thinks that he's doing the right thing, but I wholeheartedly tell you that Goku Black and Zamazu know they are the villain in the story, and that is the reason they fall into that villain cliche. It's one of the main aspects of what makes a villain is selfishness. Zamazu... Goku Black has selfishness in spades, and at the very end, he becomes so arrogant, he thinks himself a god. It's almost like he's corrupted by the power of immortality, and the power that Goku Black has, the Super Saiyan Rose has, that he knows that he can't be beat. And this makes him very selfish, and he does not feel sorry for them. He, he kills all the other gods. Somebody who's just after the mortals wouldn't do that, just because they the gods will try to stop them. Which is true, and would have been a cool thing to see in the story. God's, you know, sending mercenaries trying to defeat him, and him, him just destroying them, the Kais, just like Majin Buu did. That would have been cool to see. Now, another thing that he complains about is the mystery. That is the worst mystery uh, in that the worst plot point, I guess he states in the video, because Goku Black ends up just being Zamazu. Well, I'm gonna say that. That's bullshit. This is probably the best mystery that I can remember because it has an air of not knowing. It has a lot of things that are alien to us that are put together that don't make any sense. A Goku that is evil, that has a Kai earring, that's facing off against future trunks, and my like that is the epitome of mystery that this is the big the biggest besides who's becoming president in 2016 this was the biggest mystery in all of 2016 for the anime community in my opinion my humblest opinion this is the this mystery was really rich 
in the fact that we didn't really know exactly what was going to happen next. At one point, it became a crime-solving story when they were trying to find evidence of if Samazu was going to kill Gowasu. And then he does, and then he just turns, his wish turns back time and stops him from doing so. I mean, when you, when you get to mystery, it doesn't get better than that. When we first see Trunks, it's a mystery of who he is, and it's the same thing. That's what Akira Toriyama did. He brought the same elements of what we loved from first seeing Future Trunks and instilling it in this in this arc. Future Trunks comes out of nowhere to face off Frieza. We thought the Z Fighters were gonna face him, or Goku was gonna try to get there earlier somehow and fight Me Mecha Frieza, which I think should be in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3, Xenoverse 3, by the way, but Trunks himself is, we don't, when I was watching it as a kid, I didn't know who he was. I just thought he looked cool. I saw the Capsule Corp insignia and I was like, is he from Capsule Corp? Wait, he's a Saiyan. There's only, there's no more Saiyans alive and, and only one other one that can become a Super Saiyan and this is a Saiyan right after that. Like, th the mystery sense that he took from that aspect, he instilled it in this, making Goku Black a villain that we don't know really anything about him. We don't know even where he comes from. We don't know him at all. We don't know what his, what his connection is with Zamazu. We didn't know what Trunks' connection was with with uh, Capsule Corp up until the second, third episode. I mean, this is a longer mystery, but this takes uh, sort of this takes, I guess, some some uh, life lessons from the, from that mystery. I mean, the only other mysteries we really get in Dragon Ball are the androids. Uh, why are there two extra ones? Oh, history got changed. That's not really that big of a mystery. Uh, Cell coming over. That was kind of a mystery when he was eating up all those people and then you have to find out that who he was and what he was doing there. The only other mystery we get is when we first see Supreme Kai, we don't really know who he is. We don't know what Majin Buu is. That's kind of a mystery, but this was an actual, the first arc that revolved around a mystery. And it, in Akira Toriyama fashion, it was the simplest answer he has a connection with Zamazu what's his connection are they working together oh I see them both at the same time no he's Zamazu that's why he's got a time ring end of story another thing that he states in his video is that we are fighting in a barren wasteland that they couldn't fix the place up apparently before future trunks before uh, once Future Trunks destroyed the androids, he couldn't fix up the place. He could, they couldn't, they, the humans didn't fix up the society. I'm pretty sure he didn't watch all the episodes of Dragon Ball Super because in the very beginning there is an episode where you see Goku Black first coming into play, where he first meets him. He has a flashback of him, and you see all the cities and all the buildings being scaffolded, and, and it was actually looking pretty good until Goku Black appeared and then you know destroyed everything again. So. Those kind of things uh, he's stating in the video, which is a really popular video, I mean, the dislikes are pretty high. It's half of what the likes are, so it's this, this, this theory, idea, I guess, is split to almost 50,000 views. So spreading misinformation like this is kind of, is a little bit dangerous in my opinion. Now. This is one thing that I actually kind of agree with him on, on it, uh, is that he believed that holding off uh, future Boma's death until much later, until much later into the arc, so that way Vegeta could meet future Boma would add a lot to his character, would add a lot of character growth, would be an epic moment. If if Goku Black destroyed Boma, then we could have, we could have gotten to know her a little bit better. This is a great idea, but here I argue is why. Bulma's death is necessary. I'm gonna be honest with you. When we first jumped into this arc in the very first episode, in the very first moments of the ep arc, episode, I thought it was cool. It was it was going fast paced. I didn't know what was going on. I loved to see Trunks again. We saw Future Bulma again. And for those of you who haven't watched the history of Trunks or have seen the Cell Saga recently, you might have forgotten a little bit about Bulma, but we, we still remember her. We just don't know too much about her. So. Delving into her story is, is is irrelevant at this point now because they really relied on past Bulma. But here is why her death is necessary because it adds so much in the first episode to Trunks' character. 
emotionally, especially when it comes to the next two episodes, especially the next episode where Trunks wakes up. I don't know if it was at the end of this episode, actually, the first episode, but when Trunks wakes up out of his uh, almost coma and sees tr and sees uh, Goku for the first time and, and doesn't believe that he's alive because last time he saw Goku, Goku was dead. He thinks it's Goku Black. And then he sees Goku Black destroying his mom and he attacks Goku. It just shows the amount of hatred and weight and gives us something to root for. It gives us to, uh, a way to root for Trunks. Because at this point now, it's just like Trunks fighting this bad guy that we don't really know. And instead of just making Goku Black a, a, a random black, a bad guy, it makes him, it makes him a bad guy that's killed a main character, which is an, an essentiality for being a, a, a super villain in Dragon Ball series. And that leaves us, that leads us to the next thing that he complained about, which was emotional stakes. Along with all this, which ties in. It adds emotional stakes to the anime because the world that we see in, in, in Trunks' world is the same world that we've seen in the Cell Saga and the history of Trunks. We have history there. The, the, it, it, they have a lot of scenes. A lot of the arc is, is delving into the characters or the humans that are still alive. Yajirobe, those two kids that don't remember their names right now, Mai. And Mai's connection to them, Mai is a fearless leader. She's basically like that chick from Edge of Tomorrow. So that world is still essential. It just shows us that no world being on the brink of destruction can be cannot be pulled back from the brink. Eventually it wasn't, but we didn't know that. I didn't know that was going to happen. I thought they were going to save the world. And so the death, the, the, the world itself, it did have stakes. It had stakes to destroy... Uh, Goku Black and Zamazu because of how what their plan was. Their plan was to eradicate the Saiyans. They had already eradicated all the Kais, all the gods. So this has stakes and it has emotional weight. Now it brings us to my last thing, which I think I just covered a little bit. I'm looking at my notes here. The, yeah, basically, yeah. It, it makes you care because of the survivors. It makes you care because of my. That's why it takes Mai and the survivors' energy to defeat the physical form of Goku, Black, Zamazu, Merge Zamazu. And then we get the uh, obviously the one that nobody can defeat except for uh, the Omni King. So, again, you guys might not think the same way. You might think that I'm trolling this guy, but I'm just. I saw this video, I didn't like it, honestly. I thought it was it had a lot of plot holes in it. It was misconceptions, a lot of misconceptions. It was a very popular video, but I saw that it was divided in half, and I'm half of that other divide that that doesn't believe most of the things on here. Again, there was one good idea, credit to where credit's due, but for the most part, no, you got it wrong, dude. Watch the series again. Watch it two or three more times. This, uh, the, the, the Goku Black arc is one of the best arcs in my opinion because of all the things that I've said. I'll make more videos on it, but bef besides that, I want to go ahead and end this. I don't want this to be too long. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to leave a link to his video in the description below. Let me know what you guys think from his video and to my video. I don't really have that many subscribers, honestly, at all, so more than likely, you know, I don't have to warn you guys not to go over there and dislike because you'll get maybe one guy in like the next two years disliking there, but. Again, I'm a small YouTuber, what the hell. Uh, if you guys like my video, hit that like button if you agree with what I'm saying. If you want to go ahead and follow me on Twitter, the link, or, or like my Facebook page, go ahead, you can find those links in the comment section, in the description below, I mean. And if you want to go ahead and watch more of my videos and become a villain today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It will, I would really appreciate it. It's going to be Dragon Ball Black signing off.